thrillium. If you write it enough times, you'll say it enough times that you'll no longer be able to say trillium when you see a certain flower in the woods. Look at all those thrilliums. Hey, guys, um, I'm going skiing at thrillium, I mean trillium lake next week. You want to come with me? Yeah. Trillium. Thrillium. Located on Larch Mountain in southwest Washington, the same Larch Mountain Cold Creek is located on, Thrillium easily draws the largest number of riders to this area during its peak season. Yes, there is a way to bike to the top of Thrillium, but Thrillium is really a shuttle trail. It's the first one-way downhill specific mountain biking trail on DNR land in the state of Washington. You get to the bottom of Thrillium the same way you get to the bottom of Cold Creek Trail. The only difference is you do the pickup and drop off at the bridge instead of the parking area. Remember, though, that you will need a DNR Discover Pass for every vehicle you park anywhere up here. The fine is substantial, so don't risk it. You get to the top of Thrillium by driving back the way you can came and when you get to the intersection called Four Corners, which looks like this and is about a mile past the correction center, you turn left up the L1500 road. Drive up the 1500 until you see this yellow gate, keep driving, and you'll see the upper parking area for Thrillium on your right can't miss it. The trailhead is located right behind and to the right of the bathrooms, behind the signboard. Thrillium starts out with a transition of about 1,000 feet of relatively flat trail to the entrance. Don't worry, it's all meant to be quite doable on your downhill bike. You'll know you're at the entrance to Thrillium because you can see the first berm and it pretty obviously trends straight down the hill. This trail uses up all your travel right away. It's not so much that the features are that big to start with, although everything is a matter of scale, it's that there is so much chunder and a prodigious accumulation of brake bumps on this trail. Like I said, this trail gets a lot of use, and because it's a shuttle-only trail, it gets a lot of beginner use, which means it gets a lot of brakes dragged across its tread. So there are brake bumps and exposed routes everywhere. Also, because of the heavy use, this trail requires a lot of maintenance and reworking of features. It will never remain the same trail from season to season as things get reworked for durability, repair, and safety. <laughs> Whoa. So that's known as uh, Keith Stone, that jump. Cute name, had to look it up. It doesn't even stay the same trail from day to day as features subtly and sometimes dramatically change shape in response to wear. Don't whine about this trail not staying the same. It's not going to stay the same. It's a trail, not a pump track. Trails change shape. The features on this trail are huge. It's meant to be ridden on a downhill bike. Sure, since it was built, trail bikes have caught up to the point where they're rideable on this trail, but it is not a trail bike trail, and the builders are doing everything they can to ensure that it stays ahead of the trail bikes. Yes, you can ride it on your trail bike, but the trail is made for DH. Consequently, everything is built with big hits in mind, and the expectation is you're going to have lots and lots of plush travel to take those hits as well as the subsequent chunder. This is not a buffed out flow trail, it's a challenging downhill trail. There are tables and doubles everywhere on this trail, all ensuring that excessive caution will net you a slow, slow descent. The tables closer to the top are smaller and easier to clear, but they're just a preview of things to come. One important note about Thrillium is that it's really slippery from moisture in the early season right after the yellow gate opens, and it's really slippery from loose gravel and rocks as soon as it dries out. You're only going to beat your Strava record on this trail during that golden period where it's moist but not sloppy. Good luck timing your arrival for that sweet spot. Thrillium gets more riders than the maintainers can keep up with. It's just the fact of life for a downhill trail like this. The build season is so short, especially this last winter when the snow lingered around so long the trail couldn't be accessed with shovels for months, but it's imperative that if you live near this trail and ride it, you heed the call to work parties when you see them pop up on Facebook. There is a lot to be done, and it can't be handled with the number of volunteers currently showing up to work parties. That said, do not add features to this trail. This trail is maintained in partnership with the Department of Natural Resources. This is not the place for your rogue building projects. Show up to meetings and work parties if you want input into how this trail evolves. I assure you, the board members of Cold Creek are very open to suggestions from people who show up to work parties. There is this one sort of flat section in the middle that a lot of people like to complain about, but that's one of the things that makes this a good downhill trail. You can get through this section if you know how to pump through features and make creative use of jibs and rollers to keep your momentum up. If you're having trouble here, it's really a reflection
extension of your skill level. Don't blame the trail for being a challenge. Go spend some time at the indoor pump track on a rainy day and then come back and ride this section. You'll be shocked at how much faster it feels after a little pump track practice on a dirt jumper. Because Thrillium is so popular, there are roll arounds for all the commit or die features. The DNR makes sure those get included because the trail would become an attractive nuisance without them. So a beginner can ride this trail, but it'll take them a really, really long time to get to the bottom and they won't be happy when they get there. After this road crossing, things get a little more epic. If you like launching yourself, then keep your speed up on this section right after this road crossing and stay to the left because you're about to hit Godzilla. I mean you, not me. I'm not going to hit Godzilla. I'm on my trail bike. Now the comment thread is going to fill up with people chastising me for taking the ride around on this one. Whatever guys, I know, I know you're on the same bike as me and you hit it just fine all the time. I happen to know a lot of you have been hurt on this feature. Anyway, keep going and keep your speed way up. This is where the trail really goes big. These tables are huge. I think one of them is like 40 feet. The only thing missing on this trail is gaps, but you don't need gaps to hurt yourself on this trail. These features are big enough and the trail fast enough here for you to get injured even without fully committed die features, just keep in mind that the GoPro is mounted under my helmet visor. It is not doing justice to the size of these features. Just put the name of this trail in YouTube and you'll find plenty of videos of plenty of people riding this way faster than me while wearing chest mounts and gimbals. Then you can evaluate the features. Now we get to where this trail really takes advantage of the soil and slopes it's built on. This particular composition of clay holds together really, really well on steep grades. So steepness is what you get here. It's kind of a flowy steepness, and that flowiness is almost more dangerous than if there were more obstacles like on Predator, because you get going stupid fast here. Word is that last season, a guy split a DOT-approved motorcycle helmet in half when he hit a tree on this trail. So be careful, watch your speed. This last series of big features is pretty close to the bottom, and they are big. This is one of those places where it's really hard to keep your speed up on a trail bike, and thus it's hard to clear these. You want a downhill bike for this section for sure, especially as you round the corner and come to all this chunder. A little word to the wise about this section, it was expressly built to break trail bikes. The guy on the excavator that day was telling everyone who'd listened that he was making it his express goal to break as many trail bikes as possible coming down this section during enduro races. I know because I was there when I put a lot of those rocks here. Don't say I didn't warn you. I warned you you're gonna break your trail bike. After this last section of insane chunder, Thrillium gives you a couple more big berms and easy to set up and clear features to make you feel good about yourself before dropping you here right back at the bottom. Just beware that this last berm gets really slippery when it's wet. If you're not careful, you might just slide out and go OTB right in front of a group of pros who just happened to be filming there that day. Not that I would know anything about that. Now you're back at the parking lot. It takes about 20 minutes or so to shuttle back to the top. So shuttle back to the top and get another ride in. If you're clever and can get off work early, come up here at four on a weeknight. Ride Cold Creek to the picnic table and back down. Then by the time you get to the lower lot at six, there will probably be a group assembling to shuttle Thrillium. Throw your bike in the back of their truck and get a second run in. This place is awesome. This trail is awesome. Please click the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Share this video on your favorite social networks. Share it to your favorite mountain biking forums. Now get out there and go ride your bike.